On to part three of our four part series on becoming a licensed Medicare insurance agent. So part three is all about contracting. So now you have passed a hip, you have your license, and now you are ready to get contracted with insurance carriers so that you can sell their particular products. What I will tell you first step in part three is you're going to need errors and omissions insurance. Errors and omissions insurance is simply insurance in case you are working a client and you make a mistake or an error error and they decide to sue you for it. Errors and omissions insurance is going to cover you for that oversight. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get errors and omissions insurance in part three. In the resource guide that I have below, if you have not downloaded it already, there is a link to the errors and omissions insurance carrier that I have mine through, but there's a bunch of them out there. I just linked the one that I actually have mine through. Now let's talk about what type of agent you actually want to be. So there's a captive agent and then there's an independent agent. If you are a captive agent, that simply means you're only selling for one particular insurance carrier. So you may decide that I only want to sell for United or I only want to sell for Humana. That's going to make you a captive agent. Now, as a captive agent, you could be working directly for one of these insurance carriers and you could be doing that as an employee. So they may be paying you a salary or an hourly wage for you to be there as an agent. They may also tack on bonuses and extra commissions for different sales performance. However, you're only selling that particular insurance carrier's product. Or maybe you don't want to be an employee, but you're working through a broker service or you're working directly through the insurance carrier. And also in the resource guide that I have below in the description, I have a link to each one of the major carriers agent website where you can actually go and contract directly yourself unless you go through a broker like myself, which we will talk about. Okay, and then so let's just say you did that and you wanted to just sell only for Humana or United, and but you wanted to do it directly, but you didn't want to do it as an employee, you could be a 1099 contractor that says I'm only going to sell for this particular carrier. Independent agent is what I am. So I sell for all the major carriers plus our local blues plan. And so because I'm selling more than one insurance carrier, I am considered an independent agent, all right? So captive just means you're selling for one carrier. Independent agent means you're selling for more than one carrier. As a captive agent, you can do that as an employee or you can do it as a 1099 contractor where you'll just get commissions for every sale that you make um, versus being an employee where you're going to get a standard salary and wage and maybe bonuses and commissions tacked on top of it. All right, so let's talk about broker services. So I actually worked through a broker service. And the reason I chose to work through a broker service is because they handle all of my contracting. They handle all things compliance. They keep me updated. They run these trainings. And the cool part about it is I get the same commissions working through the broker service as if I went directly with each one of these insurance carriers. And the reason that is, is because the broker service themselves have come up with contractual fees that they charge the carriers for every insurance policy that their agents sell. So they're not taking anything out of the individual agents commissions. They're getting their own fees tacked on the top. And so therefore it makes no sense in my opinion for me to go and contract directly with these carriers. And when I get access to a whole lot more resources by doing it with the broker services and I don't have to give up any of my commissions in exchange for it. So the choice is totally yours. You can become captive. You can become independent. You can, if you're going to be independent, you can sign up directly with each one of these carriers yourself. If there's a plan in your area that's not on that resource guide, then if you go to their website, they usually have an agent section that gives you the instructions on how you can actually sign up and become an agent with that particular plan. I will encourage you though, if there's a broker in your area that has a similar relationship like what I just described, I would reach out and talk to them and see if that's a good fit for you. Now, maybe you're in an area and there's only a couple of plans that are widely available. So maybe in your area, there's only like a United and an Aetna and they cover 90% of your population. You may only wanna sell for those two and you may go directly uh, to their website and sign up to be an agent. That's also another option, okay? So for me, I'm an independent agent. I do it through a broker service. I get the same commissions as if I went directly to them because the broker service has arranged their own fee structure to get paid for the services that they provide based on each sale of each one of the agents. Unsure about becoming an agent? You need this ebook and mini course. Our ebook and mini course will help you be a better agent. 
Learn from the best, avoid costly mistakes, and get ahead of the competition. Plus, join our exclusive live webinars with Q&A for all your Medicare questions. Don't wait. Grab your bundle now and use the discount code in the video description. Your future as a top Medicare agent starts here. Now, the final step in part three of becoming a licensed Medicare agent is once you become contracted with each of these carriers, you're then gonna have to do carrier specific product training and attestations. And the contracting process is just going to have you, if like me, I'm an independent agent, I have to supply a W-9, I have to supply demographic information like your name, address, social security number, all that kind of stuff to set up profiles. But then once all that is approved, then you have to do carrier specific training for each of the products that they're going to sell during AEP. Okay, and so AEP is annual enrollment period. And so what happens is they have different plans and products that are coming out for the following year. You have to go in and you have to get trained on those for every carrier. So here's another way that you can decide whether or not you want to sell for multiple carriers. You may be a new agent and say, you know what, I really just wanna get my feet wet to start with. I'm only going to sell for one particular plan, understand their products, and then maybe next year, I'll add on the remaining plans in my area. You, that's totally a great option uh, so that you're not overwhelmed your first year. Or you can be like me, uh, I did all of them right out the gate. Uh, to, to me, it just reinforces what each plan has to offer um, because if you go out and you look at some of these plans that are already available there's not a whole lot of difference the terminology is the same the amounts that they cover may be a little different um, but overall the plan setup itself is the same it's just what are those actual benefits so that is the last part of part three of becoming a licensed agent which is in the contracting section you need to get your errors and omissions insurance decide whether you're going to be a captive or independent agent and start getting contracted with each of the insurance carriers that you want to sell for and then once you're contracted you're going to have to complete carrier specific product training and do some attestations every single year in order for you to sell products for that insurance company. All right, so that is the end of part three of this four-part series on becoming a licensed Medicare agent. So right now you have become licensed, you have passed a HIP Medicare certification, and you have become contracted. And so you can now consider yourself ready to sell like sticking around and watching I encourage you to watch this client workup uh, video that I have where I actually use the Medicare plan finder and show you how I actually work with prospective clients as well as my current book of business during annual enrollment period to find a plan that is suitable for them thank you so much for watching and again if you have any questions please drop them in the comments below and we will be sure to answer them for you